So good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our first webinar, um, episode one. Um, we were going to call it the Phantom webinar, but this is really about um, the use of tech in the current lockdown period. And this is a, a webinar that uh, myself and my colleague Jason are creating just to talk, discuss and let you know of the latest tips and tricks about using the Microsoft product stack, um, Microsoft 365 um, in um, in this era of remote learning. Um, my name, as I said, is Kevin Say. I work for Microsoft in the Surface for Education team, um, but I have been um, in the education sector from an IT perspective um, for, for many years now, um, having been the head of uh, IT strategy at Wyndham High School um, and also uh, the IT manager for Long Stratton High School as well before that. Um, my colleague that is also on the call is uh, Jason Brown um, and Jason is probably located that way if we've got <laughs> this right, if we may not. But Jason, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Jason Brown. I'm 22 years old. Uh, at the moment, I am studying BSc uh, User Experience Design at Norwich University of the Arts, but I'm going to be graduating this year and going on to work in UX Design at National Grid uh, later in 2020. Uh, but before I went to university, I worked with Kevin Say at Wyndham High Academy in uh, technology and education. And we did a lot of really cool stuff with Microsoft Education UK and globally. And part of what we did was deploy Office 365 and several hundred Microsoft devices over the course of several years to around 2000 end users. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, so that was back in about 2013, um, I think, when our paths first crossed, didn't they, Jason? Yeah. Um, and um, we, we spent a couple of years working uh, together um, in, in the school. Um, but, you know, now we find ourselves in the midst of this uh, this pandemic um, and probably um, from a technology perspective, it's really put a focus from a government level down on the use of technology in education. Um, so what we're really finding is is that kind of um, use of the Microsoft Cloud um, using the, the devices um, of real kind of strategic importance for uh, students to progress and learn um, when working from home. So, I mean, I really suppose the the, the first thing is um, that, that, you know, if we if we took a like this pandemic that we have now, I, I call this part of the, the, the kind of thing our, our kind of perfect storm because we have all of the kind of tools, services, devices, um, all at the right price. But if, if this happened 10 years ago, I mean, Jason, your experience as a student, you know, would we be able, would you be able to, how did you work? Would you be able to work remotely from home in the same way that students can do now? Well, yeah, I probably would have been able to, but it would have been a very different workflow. So you know, 10 years ago, that was in 2010, you know, I would have had um, Office 2007 or 2010 or um, I'm probably running on Windows Vista or Windows 7. And my workflow very much would have been let's open up Word and write a document in it and then save it to my local computer. And then if I needed to get it to the teacher without being able to see them, really the only way to do that would have been email, which would have been mm. fine from my end, but I can only imagine how confusing it must have would have been, sorry, for teachers to end up with mailboxes filled with 30 oh, emails sure. per yeah. class. Yeah, yeah. And you know, back in 2010, the cloud was a new idea. I remember there being posts on forums about concerns about security of the cloud and space on the cloud. You know, most cloud storage providers only gave you about one gig of free space, if that, sometimes just a few hundred megabytes. So the, the cloud wasn't really a thing. There was certainly a lot less or even no kind of real time editing or mm -hmm. sharing or anything like that. And that uh, those those collaboration tools. I mean, I, I know you're you uh, are well engrossed in using the cloud in your kind of um, course that you're on at the moment. But how important are those collaboration skills and being able to share documents with people rather than emailing in and, and getting different replies and, and things like that? Oh, extremely important. It just just smooths the whole workflow out. You know, I'm not dealing with all these emails flying into my inbox with attachments that I'm then editing and then sending back and then they're editing and sending back. And then we're getting confused and lost in the chain about which document's the latest one. You know, we're just able to have a document on OneDrive or 
um, or similar, and then people are just able to access it and edit it. I mean, thanks to the cloud and uh, remote working last year and the year before, we were able to produce two full storehouse magazines without actually seeing anybody once. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're able to get work done from all corners of the world, which is a very important thing right now. That's a, that's a great example. So, I mean, if you you obviously mentioned, you know, you're using the cloud. Um, so really, I suppose from a, a kind of education perspective that, you know, the, the big question is really what is this cloud? Um, how does it work and, and what are we doing? Because you mentioned that there was, you know, go back a few years, then the people's kind of security. Where am I saving it? Those kind of issues um, always cropped up. So um, what I've got, I'm just going to going to show you a small, really small presentation, um, which is going to be um, about the introduction, uh, you know, kind of like a, a what is the cloud really, um, and keeping it as in Kevin's terms as simple and straightforward as we can. So um, here is a, a drawing I've been working on for many years, um, just to try and lay that what is the cloud picture out for people um, keeping it nice and straightforward so in the uh, bottom right hand corner you should hopefully see a uh, it's meant to be a picture of a school um, and traditionally like primary schools secondary schools um, and i'm sure jason you know when we we you kind of started at wyndham um, high school we were very much in that same model that you know we had a server room we, in that server room was a, a, a number of machines and that's where you kind of effectively through the school network stored your data. It was up to the, the IT team to make sure that data was safe, secure, compliant, um, backed up. Um, if you'd ever accidentally deleted it in an IT lesson or something like that, you know, you could come to see us and we would be able to restore it and, and things like that. Um, utilizing the cloud. Well, the utilizing cloud is, is that connectivity through the, the internet um, to a data center. Um, and of course, um, what we're talking about is we're talking about those data centers run by Microsoft. And this is a, an extensive network that, that is located throughout the world. Um, and there are three data centers that sit inside the UK um, as, at the moment. And this is where you then save your work. So the ability that Jason talked about just um, previously of being able to share um, data. So as soon as uh, Jason saves a file in um, Office 365. It goes from wherever he is through the internet to the Microsoft data center, and he can allow other people in that Office 365 tenant or um, external clients, perhaps, or something like that, to be able to access that file um, if he so desires. The great thing about this is really what we're doing is we're offloading the storage, the security, the compliance aspect to Microsoft. And of course, the main thing about this from a school's perspective, it is all for free. Um, so the Microsoft 365 Plan A1 um, is uh, free for students, free for schools, um, and allows you to do that exactly with your OneDrive storage. Now, of course, the great growth that we've seen in the use of the cloud is, is then being able to access that information from other locations and other devices. So on my left hand side there, you'll see I've got a nice house. Um, this is the house that Kev built um, and obviously by connecting to the um, connecting using my home computer, I can connect to that data in the um, in the um, in the Microsoft data center and again continue to access that securely um, in that respect. And obviously with the growth of mobile devices, we can obviously access it really from anywhere. So smartphones um, and things like that. And I suppose this slide really kind of covers that. You know, if you look there, I'm um, Jason, I'm sure you've probably used Office 365 on all of those kinds of devices, probably in the last couple of months, I would have thought. Um, but this really shows you that the the office experience is common throughout the any device. So again, if you're a school and you're looking to kind of um, get your students into Office 365, you're looking to um, get students working from home and remote learning and you've got devices that you want to reprovision or you just want to get out to students and give them an Office 365 log on, they will be able to access this securely um, and and um, store that information there in the cloud um, in that respect. So, I mean, my 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 kind of view in the in the cloud world that we work at the moment is that um, 
students are very much data centric. They're not really bothered about what device that they are accessing it on, but they want to know that the, the, the document itself will remain the same on any device. So um, Jason, I mean, how how are you using Office 365 um, in that kind of device? Well, do you use it on mobile phones and, and other devices, tablets and things? Yeah, I use it on a wide range of devices, uh, really whatever I've got on me at the time. And that's how Office 365 should be used. You shouldn't be confined to sitting at your desktop computer or laptop and using it there. You should be able to use it on whatever you have at the time, because at the end of the day, it's a cloud service with web apps that can run on any device at any time. It's not like in the old days when you had Word or Excel or PowerPoint or the whole suite installed on just a just one mm -hmm. or maybe two computers. You know, this is available everywhere. Indeed. So um, moving forward <laughs> on that, that the, the 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 premise of this kind of remote learning environment that we find ourselves in. Um, I mean, Microsoft um, under the, the CEO, Satya Nadella, um, have really changed the way they kind of do business. And I think it's generally recognized that that Microsoft has really transformed itself over the last, last five or so years. Um, and really, as we go through these webinars, we really want to get people to think in the way of these kind of three pillars of what we do. Um, so the, the first one is um, anything that comes into the Microsoft education portfolio um, from an, uh, an education um, perspective really drops into one of these pillars. So better learning outcomes for students. Um, so the great tools that are available in Office 365, which and um, can be used by students too, to allow them to progress, to allow them to achieve more. Um, transforming classroom time, again, really tools that then relate to teachers and how we can transform what teachers do in the class and then um, an affordable, easy, uh, manageable technology. So um, unlike a few years ago, um, devices now um, for a, a full Windows experience and, and a productivity experience really start at around just under £200, um, obviously going up from there, but, you know, uh, a, a, a cheap um, a Windows 10 device, which is robust, um, uh, built for education, can be as little as £200. And then the other side of it is also about supporting teachers as well. So um, if you are new to Office 365 and you are looking at establishing that remote learning um, angle um, with technology in your school. Um, you want teachers to be able to communicate better with each other and things like that. We have a great range of CPD from our Microsoft Educator community to allow teachers to get onto the, the Microsoft Innovative Educator pathway um, to the Microsoft Imagine Academy. And again, Jason, I know back in the day as a student, you, uh, you experienced the Microsoft Imagine Academy that we were running at, at Wyndham High School to get yourself certified in some of the Microsoft Office certificate uh, uh, products, sorry, um, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And, you know, how did, how did that stand you in, in kind of line for what you did after Wyndham High? Well, it was certainly something that, um, I had that not many other people did. And it was something that kind of showed that I could use Microsoft Office proficiently. Uh, I, I certified in Outlook and OneNote, two of the most popular and kind of highly respected parts of Microsoft Office to certify, and especially Outlook from a business point of view. Um, so it was good going along to interviews and saying, you know, I've also got these Microsoft Office specialist qualifications, which shows that I can use the tools of today and tomorrow in a professional manner. Cool. So from a school perspective, you know, we talk about this digital platform. What we really need to do is um, kind of really show schools uh, how they can get on this digital platform. They probably may be in a bucket of schools that have it already and don't really use it, or they may be in a, a pod of schools that, that use it quite well. But if a, a school hasn't got Office 365, um, there are various ways that you can kind of go about and, and get onto that platform. Obviously, as a primary school, you know, the best way to do that is to talk to your IT support um, people. So whether that's a third party company or that's the local authority or part of an academy trust. Um, and again, probably, you know, if you're a part of an academy trust, it's really important to make sure that you're probably, you know, you're, you're singing off the same hymn sheet. You don't want people 
in maybe one school using Google and then everybody else using Office 365 or the other way around, you know. Um, uh, so, um, you know, you really need to make sure you're having those kind of conversations. If you want to get started with Office 365, you can simply go to the website office.com and sign up for a trial um, and then um, get yourself um, a, a, an educational status from there. Um, so once you've done that, you have going to have um, all of these great services and things like that. Um, and then obviously it's about deploying that out to machines. Um, so the best way, not the best way, the, the, the way that we have worked it in the past um, is we have really concentrated on using what we call Office Online. Um, and that really is for students and the majority of teachers, probably the I call it the path of least resistance. Um, and the reason why I call it the path of least resistance is the fact that Office Online is everything in one place. Yeah, um, and it's part of Windows 10. So if you are using a Windows 10 device, you will have access to what we call the Office um, web portal um, or the Office um, application, which is kind of baked into Windows 10 at the moment. So Jason, how are you using the office in that respect um you know that that office portal because i'm i'm a one that you know the legacy wise the way i've always done it in the past is i've always like oh you know you've got a windows pc let's deploy microsoft office the big full fat desktop application and things work a bit differently now yeah so i'm going to show you in a sec how it works but as kevin sort of suggested it's not like the days when you'd have an office cd like this that i remember those to. i yeah, remember those I remember these were the silver holograms even older than they made brilliant bird scarers <laughs> um it's not like the days of old where you had to install the programs locally or on a network or some other solution i'm going to show you how we do it let me just share my screen so all we have to do is go to office.com and then sign in with your office 365 account and look, your Office apps are here. So we've got things that you'll recognize, such as Outlook and uh, Word and Excel and PowerPoint. And these are, as I say, on the tin. These are online versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook that you do not have to install. So, um, Jason, let me just interrupt you. Let me get this straight. You are just doing this from a web browser? Totally from a web browser. I could be doing this on a computer that doesn't even support Office installations natively, such as, I don't know, say a Ubuntu machine or uh, or something like that, that you can't install Office on. But I could always go to office.com and then the apps are there. So so no start programs, Microsoft Word? Nothing like that at all. Just you go to office.com. You haven't had to take your machine to the IT department and say, please install Microsoft Office on it? Definitely not. And certainly no problems with product keys or activation or any of that nonsense. It's I might here. have to celebrate with a cup of tea. <laughs> so it's all here and you'll note as well that there are additional apps that don't actually come with say uh, office 2016 pro plus or 2019 pro a uh, pro plus such as sway and forms and if you click on all apps here you can see that there are many 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 other things that you can look into if you really wanted to you know even things like room booking services so office 365 is so much more than what used to be supplied on CDs like this, where if you were lucky, sometimes you got an HTML ed editor. Okay, Jason, um, so 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 talk to me about where where in, on that web page, how do I save stuff? How do I how do I use the power of the cloud um, if I wanted to create a document um, and do all that groovy kind of sharing stuff that you mentioned earlier on? Well, all of the sharing stuff and uh, saving and whatnot is all saved on to OneDrive, which is something that you talked a little bit about earlier when you were uh, talking about data centers and how the cloud works. And essentially what this is, is one terabyte of free cloud storage in which you can upload any type of file that you okay. want. Yep. Um, but so this is this is kind of like my my documents folder in the cloud, this that kind of H drive that I'm used to on my network. It's so much more than your H drive. Your H drive may only be about two gigabytes. This is 1024, it's one terabyte. So think of this as a replacement hard disk drive, more okay. so than a replacement document folder. Cool. <laughs> so, and, and I notice you've got a, a Word document in there at the moment. I have, and I was just about to say that although you can upload any type of file, crucially, you can actually create certain types of file here within Microsoft OneDrive. So we could create a new Word document, create a new Excel workbook, or create a new folder or similar without actually having to, you know, 
open up any of these apps already. But we do indeed have a Word document here. So let's have a, let's open it up. It's about Winston Churchill and it's copied and pasted from Wikipedia at the moment. But the beauty of uh, Word Online is that everything you do is saved instantly. So if I wanted to make all of this text bigger, I'm making it bigger and you'll note that it's saying saving up here. I'm not doing anything. I'm not pressing control S. I'm not going file save as. In fact, if you see in the save as menu, you'll see that there, there's this where's the save button? Well, there's no need to have one because everything's automatically saved for you. Okay. And that's that's the power of Office so, 365. On so so you're, you're telling me I'm never going to lose a document again that I create. It's not going to crash. If it crashes, I'll be able to go back to where I was. Um, I can't. I, I can't not save something. Indeed, and you can even uh, look at version history as well. So if you make a mistake in here and if something's wrong, there's the days of having to go back to the IT department and get a version that's say, I don't know, one day old and has lost several key changes is over. Because all you need to do is you just need to go into your uh, Office 365 and then from here you'll be able to see previous versions and edit those instead. And that's mm -hmm. been a lifesaver several times for me. Cool. Good. And you'll be able to see all of the activity as well. Sure. So in, in your Word document, I mean, how about uh, uh, any of the ways which Office 365 can kind of help students um, to be more productive, like we said in that first pillar of the, 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 the Microsoft education aims? Um, are there any tools that kind of, uh, you know, allow that to happen? Well, what we do have for students who are dyslexic and uh, potentially visually impaired is the Microsoft Immersive Reader. And okay. as you may or may not know, Kevin, one thing that I have been doing for the past year on my degree is making accessible software. Oh, and, I think um, I know that. I think I know that very much. <laughs> Immersive Reader has been a very good case study, especially for uh, dyslexic students. Uh, what we have here is a simplified view of Microsoft Office that uh, Microsoft has poured a lot of research into making. You can actually go online and find all the papers that they read in order to make this. And if you're interested in it, it's good. But you can see that with the immersive reader, we're able to easily change the text size, uh, edit the line spacing, because some students actually read faster when there's more line spacing. Mm -hmm. We can change the font. So Calibri, which is a uh, pretty typical sans serif font, Sitka which was designed by scientists and um, designers in order to make a font that was extremely legible and Comic Sans which everybody laughs about but actually is a highly legible font and in my own testing some people prefer this font to any other especially those with severe vision impairments oh, okay and we can change the colors the themes so uh, this all comes from research from Helen Erlen, who is uh, famously famously coined the Erlen um, theorem. And what she did way back in the 80s and 90s was actually do research with dyslexic students to find which colour filters improved their reading. And what she found was that a combination of colours was usually the best option. Hence why some of these, hence why there are so many colours to choose from, and hence why they're a little bit pastely as well, mm -hmm. because they're actually a mix. So in here, you'll almost certainly be able to find something that works well for uh, everybody. So these are just a few of the things that we can do with Immersive Reader. We've got a text-to-speech engine, which actually highlights the words that are being read at any one time, which is very helpful. And uh, also what we can do is for those who maybe English isn't their first language or they're struggling to understand uh, concepts of English, we can actually show words such as nouns by highlighting them, uh, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. We can even show individual syllables as well. Britain's Middle East policy. And, you know, you can, that's quite good. This would have been a great tool when I was at school, I've got to say. Well, it's already helping out a lot of students who are dyslexic and uh, and have mild to, uh, and have mild visual impairments as well. So, this is a great tool to use that's had a lot of research pumped into it yep. and yeah and i've got to say i mean from my perspective it's uh um i i don't suffer from dyslexia in any way but it's actually a tool that i use quite frequently just simply to proof check stuff so um i get uh when i'm creating a document i'll get it to read it back to me so it'll pick out on any punctuation or 
or anything like that. Or sometimes I'm, I'm a bit um, a bit renowned for making super long sentences, which you probably would, you know, you need to take a break halfway through and, and breathe in. Um, so, um, yeah, I use it for that way. But I, I, I think generally the immersive reader, which is kind of creeping into, you know, really across the Microsoft stack platform, um, really is one of those kind of key moments in, in the technology, you know, that every student should be should know about this. Um, and, and they'll use it differently. You know, we, we're not having to go down how we used to do a few years back where there were, you know, special bits of software that had to be installed on someone's machine and things like that. This is a part of that technology toolkit that any student should be aware of um, and any teacher should be aware of really um, to help them use the technology to get better outcomes. I mean, did you know, Kevin, that Immersive Reader is actually award winning as well now? Is yeah. it really? Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, no, I did uh, not know earlier, that. Uh, earlier this year, Immersive Reader won awards for uh, accessible technology. I, I wrote about it in one of my university reports. Um, so this software, <laughs> when it came out, well, I remember going to the Bet show in like 2015 and being handed this software on a USB drive in order to uh, have yep. a look at it. And it was called Learning Tools back then. And it now it's a fully fledged part of Microsoft Office 365 that Kevin, as Kevin has said, is creeping into other apps, as you'll see later in this webinar as well. <laughs> Indeed. So what about things like, I mean, so obviously I'm a great PowerPoint user. Any cool tips that you can show us in, in PowerPoint that uh, speed my day up, maybe transform my teaching time, perhaps? Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so we can go new PowerPoint presentation. And um, I think also we should just briefly touch on whether PowerPoint is indeed the right tool to use, because there's also Office Sway as well, which mm -hmm. is for different types of presentation. But if you do decide that PowerPoint is what you want to use, then you can uh, simply create a PowerPoint like this. And you'll see that actually it looks strikingly similar to PowerPoint that we have known since about Office 2007 with its ribbon UI. I've got, and in I've got fact, to say, it looks, it looks more simplified to me. You know, you, I've got one ribbon on there, um, which has got the kind of common things that I need and I would use um, uh, in that respect. But I also notice you've got that uh, that button up there just under the presentation that says open in desktop app. So oh, I, yes. suppose, I suppose if I if I really needed that full blown experience as a teacher, I could just like flip out to there and do some specialist stuff. But really, for my day to day work is as PowerPoint online is the, the only thing I use. Yeah, and even in PowerPoint Online, you know, this interface now looks very similar to PowerPoint 2013, 2016, 2019. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming from that, this is a familiar experience. However, the sure. simplified ribbon is what I prefer, uh, just because it, it looks a lot nicer. Anyway, so cool thing about PowerPoint over the past few years is it's actually had an awful lot of AI built into it. You wouldn't believe how much AI is now in PowerPoint. And um, we're not talking about robots that are going to come out the screen and do all sorts of stuff. We're talking we about AI. We, we're talking about clever AI. AI yeah. is actually going to help you and not frighten you. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a presentation about space. So let's say that we're delivering this to the classroom space and the universe. And let's call it, uh, let's pretend it's from a physics module. This, when I was studying physics, this was in a unit called seven. Um, anyway, what we can do is we can take this rather bland PowerPoint that in the past you would have had to have gone, I don't know, insert pictures and then spent hours actually organizing. Well, or... I, think, uh, I think most people, most students would tend to probably spend more time in thinking about the design the background um, than they would do about the content um, in that oh, respect. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I tend to find that, that most students would hand in like a PowerPoint, which kind of um, had uh, one of two settings. It was either so many colors, different text styles, fonts, transitions, animations that I would kind of lose control of, of what I'm looking at, or it was normally black text on a white background. But um, you you saying that we have got some AI that can help us deal with this? Yeah, so in the past, students, you know, as Kevin has said, students may have just kind of resorted to the inbuilt themes and that sort of thing. But what we can actually do now is we can choose PowerPoint designer and look already we're seeing that these relevant designs are popping up, especially this one here. So what what's happened is, is PowerPoint has 
sort of detective that would type space in the universe and then mm -hmm. it looked for an appropriate background for us to use without his having to go insert pictures and then search on Bing for clip art or go or go into another browser tab, download a few pictures and that sort of thing. It's all there. So what we can do now is we'll go into a new slide and then you can see that there's been a sort of theme applied here by default. But again, if we if we just type Saturn V rocket, it landed on the moon. I hope these facts are right. <laughs> there we go. So hopefully what happens is, is that the designer kicks in again and it starts suggesting, uh, it starts suggesting new ideas for the way that the, uh, the slide should look based on the sort of theme that has been chosen for previous slides as well. And you can see, um, also that it's now suggesting different ways that the same slide could look. So it's quite good um, in that you can quickly and easily create good looking slides without having to spend forever and ever and ever on it. And um, it, it just speeds up the workflow massively. Fabulous. Great. Good tips. Good tips. So um, as we're kind of uh, heading towards the end of our, our the first episode one. I mean, really what we have looked at is we have looked at the kind of, um, yeah, very much where, where we are now. Um, the, the fact that for key remote learning, you really need a good, good digital platform. Um, and some of the things that you can sort of begin to pull into place um, in the way of the, the those technologies. And these are things that we will expand on in the next uh, couple of um, sessions that we do. Um, I suppose really the, the 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 main thing about this and the main thing about um, technology, I guess, is the is the equal kind of investment that you need to make from a CPD perspective um, from using the um, from using the the, the technology. So um, really, just wanted to uh, call out again um, the uh, couple of resources which um, uh, will really kind of get people on the journey. So uh, again, what I'm going to do is um, we're just going to steal the screen real estate at the moment and take you to um, a website which is all about CPD for the modern classroom. So all about um, using the Microsoft uh, packages. So um, this is education.microsoft.com um, and it's the free CPD resource uh, for teachers, for education. Everything on here is completely free. Um, and as you can see, we've got various courses and learning paths um, that are available for teachers to make best use of the technology. So as you can see here, here's a great course about getting started with remote learning in Office 365. Um, and we can also look at some of the things that you could do with uh, transformational products like Microsoft Teams. Um, so these are all free. Um, if you go to education.microsoft.com, you can sign in with your Office 365 account. Um, and as you complete these courses, um, you'll be able to get course certificates, digital badges um, and experience points, which kind of build you your knowledge base in, in the community and you can share with others. So this is something that we were, again will talk about uh, in one of the uh, upcoming episodes about how to get the best out of this. Um, but please bookmark this as a page because this is a key site to be aware of as you kind of um, map out and create your remote learning journey. Um, so uh, Time wise, we're, we're, we're just about where we we, um, we, we, we we should be in the way of kind of wrapping this uh, this this first edition up. Um, if um, you have any any thoughts, uh, any questions and, and bits and pieces, please leave them in the comments below. Um, and we look forward to both seeing you on the next verse, the, the next edition, sorry, which I think we may well call. Episode two. <laughs> the webinar strikes back the webinar strikes back so thank you very much everybody and we'll see you in the next one